Hello everyone and welcome to our next episode of our small mini zoo series Isle of the Wild and today we are of course building for another animal from the amazing conservation pack yeah and today we are focusing on the Chowalski's horse or Frivalski's horse or pretzel horse whatever you want to call it um, there are I think a dozen different uh, pronunciations around uh, out there and yeah and the only correct one is Chowalski's horse um, but yeah we are building for this um, very specific f uh, horse here yeah, the specific horse species uh, the only last and truly wild horse in the world um, there are no other wild horse species anymore all of them have been domesticated or are yeah, um, former domesticated species that are reintroduced in the wild like the mustangs of North America but all of them are not truly wild species the yeah Chowalski's horse is a is a real is really a, a wild species um, but it has a little bit of a story that I will talk a little bit about later but yeah we are building here um, for them in this other in this small corner of our park and if you have my already noticed there is no um, yeah, there is no fence in the background of this uh, exhibit of this habitat and this is for a specific reason because I wanted to keep this habitat a little bit open in the back um, so that it looks like the hor these horses could access also the other parts of this island um, that we are building on and could potentially uh, get out of this uh, habitat and roam around a little bit in the hills in the background that you see here um, sadly I can't make any other fences in this on this island uh, apart from the ones in this air in, in the uh, buildable area so uh, it looks a little bit um, silly in, in, in some parts but I think it, it does the trick but yeah we are building for the last true horse and this horse let me tell you it has a little bit of a troubled story um, it was first yeah it was only first discovered in 18 um, 1881 uh, 80, um, and so it's very recently that we um, even know about this species and even then it was very rare already um, there were I think only 30 uh, individuals in zoos at that time and, uh, um, oh, and 1969 was the last time people saw a wild um, specimen of this horse in yeah in its in, in nature and the only specimens that we had then were um, yeah in zoos and parks and in yeah private collections both so to say and no wild ones but since then we are trying or the, the, the community or the human people around the world trying to reintroduce these animals to their natural uh, environment again and at the moment we are talking about around uh, 2,000 wild um, species, not, not 2,000 wild species, 2,000 species in total on the, in the entire world. So this also includes uh, th um, the ones in zoos and parks, but also the ones that are free roaming in the Mongolian uh, desert. But yeah, only 2,000 um, species um, of this horse are re uh, remain on this world and this makes it a really um, yeah, endangered species. Um, this happens due to habitat loss, but also, also because of hunting back then, uh, due to um, climate changes, but also due to the problems with breeding this animal, because um, when they tried to reintroduce the horse into wild, of course they had to breed them, um, and a lot of inbreeding happened, which made them uh, very, um, yeah, um, very capable of catching diseases and very um, yeah, not having a lot of Im immune systems uh, for certain diseases so uh, these populations always face the threat of um, yeah, um, catching something that totally wipes out and, and a couple of times entire um, how you call it herds I think you call it herds the forces um, have been wiped out by some genetic disease so um, the population isn't stable at all in the wild and um, there are multiple groups around the world that try effortless, uh, not effortless, that try with all the effort to um, stabilize the population, to um, to grow the population so that at one point, maybe in hopefully in the future, 
we this animal isn't in danger anymore but at the moment it looks um, a little bit yeah it isn't safe if this uh, species will survive in the wild or if with the scimitar oryx that we'll see the next week um, it will only be um, seen uh, only in zoos and not there will be no wild populations anymore and if you're wondering why i placed around this um this this elephant grass around the outer perimeter um this is i think an old trick i think most of you already know but elephant grass has an amazing huge hitbox in this game uh one of the times where we appraise the hitbox and if you place elephant grass upside down and sink a little bit into the ground and um, it can stop animals from going over there so um since we don't have a an, since we don't have a fence on the outer perimeter i use the elephant grass trick as it's called um yeah to stop animals step animals from escaping because of course they will um, they will try to cross that border animals in this game are basically programmed to escape if there is a possibility to but yeah we are also using a lot of the new grasses and foliage in this build and i really um was looking forward to this um habitat for a long time because i could really utilize all the new grasses and flowers and meadows here and makes this a really grassy meadowy um very beautiful habitat i think in the end it turns out really great great you will see it in the real time part but yeah and so we are using a lot of these flowers and placing them everywhere and um true to their nature these animals live in the steppes so where there is a lot of grass and a lot of fo um uh, low foliage um we of course have a couple of trees here because this island is forested but in the end it is more like a meadow um than yeah, a forest or anything. Uh, we also have, will have some couple of flowers. You will also see that in the real time part. And I think in the end it looks really cool. The, the grass really is easy to work with, and if you combine them with a lot of small, with a few other plants like a drin grass or uh, some bracken or anything like that, or some nettles, it really gives a nice um, um, feeling of yeah, of 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 grasses, of, of of flower meadows, of of anything like that. And I really like it. Um, yeah, um, this, is, this is a really simple build to be uh, to be honest. It's really simple, um, just a, a, a big open space for the horse to roam around, and then we also build, of course, a stable um, with fully uh, functional, not fully functional, but with a full interior. Um, you see these first steps here with these uh, smaller gates to separate the um, individual um, sleeping areas. I, I would call them. Um, and this building that we will see in the next part, is the second part of this video, will also function as the uh, night quarters, the, the, the utility building for uh, the Scimitar Oryx, um, which will be on the other side of this of this building. So both um, yeah, both uh, herbivore species will be close together, and with the um, with the Shavatsky horse and the Scimitar Oryx, we are already done with all the habitat animals from this pack. We of course still have the Axolotl, um, the new small exhibit um, animal that we have to place in this zoo and I already have planned for this in their own dedicated rare, um, yeah, rare smaller critters, small, uh, small um, vivarium exhibit house where we will have stuff like um, the crested newt and the, of course axolotl but also uh, animals like the terrapin so um, because not e not only are face uh, big animals face um, extinction and, and are in danger in the wild but also smaller ones are um, yeah as I, as I said it is semi-functional um, <laughs> meaning this building it would work in real life all the measurements for the doors and the stables and uh, the boxes boxes i think is the right word for where you put a, a put where you put a, a horse at night all the box boxes would be in their dimensions would work in real life uh, for these animals and they could of course access it um but of course in the in this game um due to the hit how the hit boxes work it's a little bit of a different story um <laughs> i i even my my I either could make these um, access doors that you see here uh, incredible and crazy big so that the horse can access them and can get into the boxes um, which would totally look ridiculous and I would only have like I think three um, 
total boxes in total and we have five uh, i think five horses uh, one male four females um i could yeah so i could make them incredibly big these entrances so that the animal hitbox would uh, go um go through there but or i could go with some more realistic uh, um way and simply don't give them access to the indoor space. Um, I'm a little bit sad. Uh, maybe if front your f um, changes the how the hitboxes work in the future, we could potentially see them um, getting a able to use this. But as as it stands at the moment, they can't get in there. Um, they can access the space in in front w between these uh, these wooden um, fences. They can easily go there and stand there. Um, but through they can't fit through this door, um, and you will see in the real time part. So they should be able to <laughs> realistically. Uh, it's big enough. But yeah, my inspiration was for this build was really this what you typically see in uh, America these typical barn uh, building stable buildings that you see in America with this with the red um, coloration, and then what you typically see on 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 a on a on a on a, um, on a farm when you have where we have horses. Um, how the horse boxes are made there with these two um, there was this window part on the top that you can swing open and also the lower part to open the box to the outside and then behind there you have the, the, the night sta the stable as uh, a night stable box where this animal would s uh, be in, in, at the night and sleep there also would ha later have a footer f um, a footer footer <laughs> a food trough <laughs> a food trough there um, so everything is fitting. Um, don't worry, it will in the end it will look a little bit less detailed than you are used to in, on my channel. But this has to do that we are also using this building, of course, for the Scimitar Oryx next week. Um, so there will uh, there will be a lot more details coming then, a lot more um, uh, small things here and there. At the moment, I my goal was just to get the basic build done. Um, putting some, some things here and there and yeah this was the main goal for this episode and I have to say in the end um, I was a little bit struggling with building this because I have never built um, a farm building a, a barn an American barn I always wanted to but I never um, got the time to do that but in the end I think it turned out really cool uh, really cool and I really like how it, how it looks in the end um, it really gives the feeling of this American uh, feeling and of course our park is set in the Americans so that fits as well. And I'm even thinking of if I maybe blueprint the whole thing. Um, if I do that, of course, I will put it on the workshop. But I also think, ab think I'm thinking about um, using it also in Raven Creek once we are back there. If Frontier doesn't decide to um, put out another DLC before I'm finishing with uh, Isle of Wild. Um, then because we also will have there a, like a, um, a prairie style area in Raven Creek and we will have bisons and pronghorns there and maybe even the Chowalski horse but because I really like them they are really cool they are um, totally unique um, I was afraid they would be li uh, just a recolor or really texturing of the zebra but they have a lot of unique animations and they often give me the feeling that they are more like a donkey than a horse but uh, which makes sense because they are basically the wild ancestor of ho horses and donkeys and are very close related to them but yeah um, i'm thinking of, of using this barn also in raven creek um once we are back there and um, because i really like how it turns in the end and the different layers that we have in here but yeah um as i said different layers we this is of course a uh, two-story high it's a little bit more modern than i think you would see um i first thought if i do it a little bit more shabby uh, shaggy if i a little bit more rustic and run down um, very not much modern but in the end I, I decided to give it to have more light in here so I I went for these two rows of, of glass uh, on the lower part and the upper part so the animals are not in total dark when it's uh, when it, when they are inside and a more natural light comes in and you as I said you will see in the uh, real-time part how it turns on the end Um it's looks really well but yeah um i think that's already it all thing i want to say um, about this um sorry if it's a little bit a little bit shorter this week um but i'm still fighting a little bit with my allergies and my nose is itching uh, the whole time as well as are uh, my eyes <laughs> so i'm sorry if it's um a little bit of a shorter um 
talk here than usual. Uh, next week, I hope we have the usual long talk uh, almost to the end. Um, but yeah, I will leave you now to some music um, and I will see you then also in the end time part. So enjoy the music. I hope you enjoy and uh, you enjoyed the video so far. And we are nearly up to um, 400 subscribers as I when I record this. Um, so we are nearly um, yeah at the 400 subscriber mark. So if you haven't done already, maybe consider giving this video um, a subscription. Um, it doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me. So if you are feeling very happy today and very generous, yeah, maybe consider that. And yeah, I see you in the uh, end time part, in the real time part at the end. And until then, I wish you a great day. I hope you enjoy the video. <laughs>so and here we are now in the real time part and as you already can see our herd of Chowalski source is exploring the new habitat and yeah we don't want to keep this um, real time for too long so the video doesn't get longer and longer but I really like how this habitat turned out especially with the, all, all the flowers and grasses uh, in this meadow here yeah as I said I added some, I added some small flowers here and there um, I went with yellow and blue ones uh, don't ask me about the specific names and also, yeah, it's open into the backside, and it, it gets pretty clear, clear from this perspective that is that there is something wrong because I can't put grasses or any flowers as back there because it's outside of the zoo boundaries. But it, I think it, it still works and it still looks very cool. And yeah, there they are running uh, to this little pond of there what they that they have uh, some drinking. Uh, 
I don't know what this is. Um, maybe an Easter egg to Roach from The Witcher, uh, for people who know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> but yeah, I really like how this habitat turned out. Uh, with what is what I want to say with this little hill here, uh, with the Death's perspective that looks uh, a lot bigger than it is, and that you can really look into the far, the distance with these animals having a lot of space to roam around and I think they, they really like these spaces here uh, despite them not getting not being able to get into but yeah I also this is the finished barn building um, that will also be a lo lot more decorated in the next video and yeah we added the, these sliding doors here and um, I think here of adding maybe some other ones back there but yeah it's very simple now from the inside not much decoration here so far only the boxes are a little bit more decorated, but I'm still thinking what I could do and add into those so to make them even more realistic. Tell me in the comments if you have any ideas. And hello, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> so yeah, and the other side, as I said, will be for the scimitar oryx. So the, their habitat will be over there and you can see them there. And yeah, I really like how it turned out. Um, you didn't saw this door here in the, in the people because I cut it out. Um, but yeah, it's just a simple keeper door and I have to fix that so it doesn't, isn't too obvious because it looks kind of silly now, but uh, I will fix that in the, I will fix that after the video. But yeah, um, yeah, this is our habitat, very simple, you can see the, um, the elephant grass here, you can't see it from the guest perspective, which I think is really cool. And yeah, I really like how it, everything com comes together, back there are the leopards uh, for um, a geographical, um, so that you know, and th there are the monkeys, the siamangs. So yeah, um, I really like it. Hope you like this habitat too. Uh, tell me in the comments uh, what I could do better, what you think I could do to improve it. And also if you have, I'm still searching for ideas, what I could do, al uh, what I also could do in this little park um, that has to do with conservation. Let me know in the comments and yeah, I hope I see you in the next episode uh, next week. And until then, take care, have a great time. Bye. I see you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>